Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. That's it. We're doing another breakdown. We're going to look at some material. We're going to see what we liked and what we didn't like, because if you're a cinematographer, you will come up against the very problem that we are discussing. And if we try and figure out ahead of time how we would best tackle it, well, then guess what? You don't have to do that on the day. So you're getting better. I'm getting better. And it makes me feel good, even though we're both sort of sitting down, not doing much. At least we can pretend that we are increasing our cinematography stills when we're actually unemployed. So come with me on this journey of discovery as we look at a scene from I'm Your Woman and we're looking at an interior. It's nice. The only problem is we got to set the levels that we can't control uh, in terms of where we're going to set exposure. We have to set to what we can't control, which means we then need to supplement in to create a look. And these are some pretty beautiful looking results. And that's exactly why we're looking at it. If you like this kind of stuff, if you like this breakdown, there is many more breakdowns where that came from over on Patreon. You can find a link in the description below. You get a new feature film breakdown each and every week. We go in depth to try and become better cinematographers, really. That's the whole point of the thing. So if you like this, uh, be sure to check out that group. Plus, there's a big discord uh, of the hive mind of cinematography on the Internet. OK, let's get into this little look at I'm Your Woman. Well, OK, we're going to play backlight from the front because we know we're going to go to this shot right this is our main shot talk about massaged and manicured and not a whole lot of depth of field right and really really soft but we play it where you still get these little tiny highlights in the hair let's play through it here still get that little bit of movement but it is definitely very very diffused and what's nice again with the backlight is we have all this contrast and all this salt and pepper Basically, all of the hard work is done for you outside when you backlight, right? Because if you're in a studio, okay, you got to make all this salt and pepper. You got to make all this interest. If you're on location, you just pick the angle, which gives you the most out of the box for free. Well, that's backlight, right? It gives you the most out of the box for free. The most contrast where you get half of this building in shadow, the other half in light. Same here where you get that little tiny edge running down the tree, but then it's dark. These shadows running across the frame. Just really, really nicely done. Um, and a perfect time to do it, right? Because you can do this one. You can do this shot significantly earlier than you're going to do this shot, right? This one, I mean, she's completely in the shade now. She's not getting any backlight on her hair. Um, plus, we can move this thing basically wherever we want to because it's just a park bench. But even if you couldn't, even if it was stationary there, you would still want to do this one as late as possible, right? Because you're having to contend with all of this front light. So you're going to have to balance to the hottest thing in this image. Whereas this one, we're so tight in the reverse, we can really make these levels, right? You can neg this side of the camera to get a little bit of darkness in here. You can soften off because we're so close. Soften off the sun with like a highlight or something to still let light through, but just make it that little bit softer. And then we're just pushing level back at her this way uh, and let the background fall where it falls. But already the color palette is there, the oranges and the yellows and a little bit of greens in there. Just a really, really nice palette just to start the whole thing off. And then this one, this would be your first shot of the day, right? This can be any time. We're just looking down, smoking heaters, looking after Junior. Perfect. Okay, let's get into this kitchen scene. Okay, start with a few close-ups. None of this really matters. Now, the layout of this thing certainly matters, right? The layout of this kitchen very much matters. And there's a scene that is almost identical to this in coverage inside of a room from what's the Roger Deakins one that we have done simple man not simple man I can't remember the one with the accountant the or the professor the guy that's a professor simple man or a pleasant man whatever it's one of those Coen brothers ones and it, the scene is almost exactly the same it might be the same house right the, the fixture is almost identical the only thing that's different is the wallpaper but the room and where this thing plays out in the orientation and where people are sitting, right? We'll talk about everything as soon as we see all the positions of everybody. Yeah, okay. You see where this is going. Now, let's go back to the slightly wider version of this. There it is. This is the widest. Okay, so we have light coming through this way, right? We're not going to spend a whole lot of time over here, but that sells all of our earlier angles. This is backlighting our toaster, right? We don't want our toaster over here somewhere or something. We want our backlit toaster because we're going to go to that shot. As she comes around... Ta-da. Okay, so this. Now, this is entirely up to you and what the, the tools that you have access to and how much level you can get inside. 
if you didn't like this, you could stop down on the camera or put ND in and then up whatever is doing your room tone, right? So if you've got an 18K over here and it's bashing in this way, you could get a second one, right? Which sounds easy, um, at the, but you're probably not at that budget level. You could get something up in here just to up the ambient. You just need more level to counteract this, right? That's the, that's the thing normally with shears that you're trying to avoid. See, still playing really, really hot out there. Don't you look at the camera. Huh? Actors, they never get it. Now you're talking. <laughs> so because he's sitting where he's sitting, imagine if he, instead of sitting here, he's sitting over in this chair. Changes everything, right? But his relationship to the light and knowing that we want to be on the dark side of the line means that he has to sit either here or here or here, right? The easiest spot, because if he sits here, she's going to have to walk around, then he's going to walk out of the scene that way. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense. But sitting him here, we know that the light is going to be perfect on both her and him, and we're not going to have to change much in between. So let's go oop, to her. Now you're talking. So into the corner of the room back there, all this stuff cutting through her head, really, really soft push in here, right? Really, really soft light. Now, we, we didn't make it past the level to not clip there, right? We could have, you know, you could have pulled those down a little bit if you didn't want that super hot bit there. Um, you could have done a bunch of stuff, but if you just look at this part, now you're talking, right? You got nice wallpaper, you got perfect splitting right down the middle with a little bit of leak, then a little tiny backlight from the side. And all you're really changing here is maybe we put up some diffusion. We had a little bit of a light inside, like a sky panel, really low just to wrap it around. You can see her highlights there coming from down here somewhere. Um, and then the rest was already there before. So you're already winning because of the angle that we have chosen to have this story play out inside of the room. This eyeline from her forehead to old mates. When we go to his single, he doesn't really have a straight on single, right? He's sort of got this vibe, but still it works because we're having light from the window that we can't see. She's actually blocking that window. So this is even easier to maintain exposure balance without clipping anything. And then we're looking down the hall, which is where the rest of the scene plays out. So really, really nicely planned in order to be able to get this look for the lighting. So it's not just the skill in the lighting. It's about, okay, where's everything going to play out and where's the camera going to be to take advantage of it. So he stands up, all right? Still the lighting looks good, right? Now we're above where the light is all coming through this bit, but we're getting enough reach up here that it still looks good and the shape is still there. Even nicer for her now. Back to him, same thing, playing along that window. He leaves and see, like in here, it's okay. Like this is not Maybelline. Let him go dark in there as he walks straight into the light and then he reaches his face out, right? That is not an accident. Uh, he's reaching his face out into the light because we're pumping all of this level at him. He better take advantage of it. He reaches out and then again, perfectly matching. And if you don't like this, say you want to take this down a little bit, you can either ND on there or at this distance with anamorphic, you can just put a net out there, right? You can net this entire thing with probably one 12 by 12, just to stand hard up against the windows. You can net that. And then if you want, again, you could even lower this a little bit more if you didn't like how quite how hot it was playing, but this is perfect, perfect lighting for the balance, for the room tone balance. Maybe not for the outside. Okay. Um, for my taste, it's slightly hot, but this level of key and the level of wrap plus the little eye lights, it is perfectly balanced to this and to this, these little areas inside of the frame where it doesn't feel lit. It feels like it's coming from that window, which is really the true test of, uh, did you nail it or not? Also likes how she steps out from this thing. So it's just her all by herself, all on her own. And we're just a little bit, you know, we're not cameras probably what at like just at lip height. So we're not looking down at her. You know, you're not looking too far up her nose. This is just right. Yeah, right, sort of in that zone there where your chin, she's, you know, if you cut this thing like this, eye line above that center line. And bang, she's right in the middle of the frame now. Cut to wider. Still works for the light. We're still on the shadow side. Now he walks into the same light that she has been in, which we know is going to look good. And he turns her at an angle this way, right? Doesn't play it straight along. Because that would mean that the camera has to move left to capture the scene back and forth. We want to see a little bit of her face. 
So he turns, sort of checks his angle, which opens him up towards the light. Get a little ear whisper. Don't worry about it. Everything is good. I'm not selling drugs. But really, I'm selling drugs. Come out now. When you open the door, when you open any door, this is the direction that you want to be looking. You do not want to be looking, you know, you don't want the camera over here looking out this door. Why? Because it's going to be super hot out there and blown out. It's going to take forever to be able to light that thing and make it look halfway decent. Looking along though, along the hallway, into the actual open door, uh, that is what you want to do. So, just a little pro tip there, just so it happens to work perfectly with the location. Greeting people as they come in, ta-da, and then he closes. And that's it. All right, did you see what I was talking about there? That like the hard part is we have to choose how hot we want those levels to be outside. Some people don't mind that level of heat where you are just blasting in that much ambient. Other people do mind. And so you're going to try and overcome that if you don't like it. If you do like it, well then, uh, I think your job is slightly easier if you're going to be keen to embrace blown out highlights because it means you don't have to do as much balancing. And in my mind, balancing is the tricky bit. Okay, you made it to the end of the video. I think 99% of you don't. So if you did make it, kudos to you. Uh, leave a comment below with some cryptic message about how you made it to the end. You managed to not click the next button. Or realistically, it's probably, I don't know, the control is uh, too far to reach, so you can't be bothered. If you're anything like me, that is certainly the case when I'm watching other people's YouTube videos. Okay, that is going to do it. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.